Hey there, welcome to The Anxious Truth. Something a little bit different today. I'm actually on the north shore of Long Island on a beach with nobody on it. And I promised that I would do a series of podcasts where I re went to places that I used to be terrified to go to and I would record those podcasts. This is number three in that series. So I just wanna to talk to you for a few minutes today about what it was like to be in a place like this when I was at my worst. I would have never come to this beach, especially this time of year where it's pre-season, it's a little bit of a colder day. As you can see, it's really windy. I hope you can hear me. And uh, there's nobody here on this beach. I mean, there's a few scattered people around, but, but I could count them all on one hand. And they're all really far away. They're really quite far down that way and really far behind me. So I walked a ways out into the sand to get to where I am now. And I would have never come to a place like this because I am too far from help, air quotes, help. At the time when I struggled the most with panic disorder and agoraphobia, I was constantly really concerned that I might need medical attention. And so driving here to this beach through an area where my cell phone doesn't really get service, where there's nobody and where I'm far from a hospital or ambulance or EMT doctors, medical attention, just any other human beings that could so-called rescue me would have been out of the question. I would have never done it. Yet here I am now. So this is would, would have been an, a very difficult place to come to or really an impossible place to come to. And I would struggle to come to places like this even with other people when I was at my worst, like with my family. And when you live on a place like Long Island, which is surrounded by beaches, it's what we have on all sides of us, it really tends to point out how restricted your life is because going to the beach and being on beaches and being by water is sort of baked into what we do here. It's the way I grew up, it's what I know. And I was not able to do that for a very long time. So I thought that today coming to this beach on the off season with no one here when it's pretty much deserted and if something were to happen to me, I don't know if anybody would be able to save me, was probably worth doing. So. If you are in that same spot right now and you find that your life is very restricted because of this sort of thing, you are afraid to be too far from help, too far from medical attention, worried that something is going to happen to you because you interpret being anxious as a medical emergency or as being dangerous or as something you need to be saved from, I get it. Because I used to miss out on all of this and it's beautiful because I was just too afraid to come here because I was afraid of my own body and afraid of my own mind. But now I'm really happy to be here. It's actually, it's a little windy today, as you can tell, but it's nice to be here recording. I recorded, I think, last year or the year before. I did one podcast episode on the beach, and I really loved it. And I thought, oh, I'm going to come back here and do it again, uh, just that I'm going to talk to you about why for so long it was really, really difficult for me to do this. Not even really difficult, I would have to admit, virtually impossible. So again, just to reiterate, if this sounds like you and you find that your life is severely restricted because you fear that you cannot be too far away from help when you panic or when your heart is racing or when it feels like you're gonna pass out or when it feels like you're gonna have a psychotic break and you think you need to be saved, I hear you. I hear you, I used to be you too. But the topic of today's podcast is not just that. The topic of today's podcast is how do I stay recovered? People often ask me for tips like, okay, life after recovery, what do you do to make sure it doesn't come back? How do you stay recovered? And really the answer to that is that I don't do anything to stay recovered, primarily because I don't have to do anything to stay recovered. Now, one thing I will tell you is one of the habits that stays with me post recovery is that I always make sure to not go into avoidance mode. Listen, even for people who are not anxious, people who are not dealing with disordered anxiety, life can be sometimes scary. There are things that make us uncomfortable. There are things that we worry about. There are things that we are afraid to do. That's true. There are things that stress us out. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that I spent my day jumping out of airplanes or bungee jumping or cliff diving or things like that. I, I don't do those things. But anytime I am confronted with something that makes me a little bit uncomfortable, after the, the process that I went through to recover from an anxiety disorder, I will automatically go toward that discomfort. So if you wanna know like what I do to stay recovered, I might say that that's one habit that I am in, sort of not even, without even really thinking about being in that habit, I tend to do that. I tend to go toward discomfort and toward uncomfortable things and toward challenging things. And to a certain extent, I believe that maybe that does somewhat inoculate me and keep me from sliding backwards because we all have a propensity to slide backwards. 
But the reason why I started by saying that I don't need to do anything to stay recovered is because the way I view anxiety, the way I view panic, the way I view the physical symptoms, the way I view the thoughts are very different than the way they used to be viewed years ago. And in last week's podcast, I believe it was last week's podcast, I talked about, or one of the podcasts recently, I don't even remember, I did talk about how you will judge your anxiety based on how you feel about it today. And when you project yourself into the future, you think about it the way you are today. So you will put the today version of you in the future and think, there's no way I could ever not be afraid of this. But that's because today you was afraid of it. And back in the day, I was afraid of it too. But the difference is I'm not that person anymore. So I don't really have to do anything to stay recovered. Because in a way, there's nothing to recover from. Now, I don't know if that makes some sense. If you're struggling and you're in the thick of it right now, that might, might, might not make a whole lot of sense. But I promise, as you go down the road and as you work on this and as you continue to work the process, it will begin to make sense to you. I promise it will. Because in the end, you're the one that's changing, right? I did talk about that pretty recently. You're the one that's changing. The anxiety is not changing. The anxiety isn't going away. The anxiety isn't getting any different. You're changing and you're forming a new relationship with it and you just see it differently. So I don't have to do anything to stay recovered because I have nothing, I'm not afraid of anxiety anymore. It doesn't occupy the same place in my life that it once did. It doesn't have an influence on what I do. It doesn't make decisions for me. It never factors into anything that I do. If I got a phone call right now that said, hey, why don't you hop on a plane and come to Colorado to visit me? I would do that or not, but whether I did it or not would have nothing to do with how anxious I think I'm going to be, or whether I might panic in an airport, or whether I might be too far from home. None of those things enter into my mind or my thoughts ever anymore. So I don't really have to work at staying recovered at all because there's nothing to recover from. I'm just not afraid anymore. So if I have a panic attack alone on this beach, I know that it'll be over. It won't be nice, I won't like it. I don't wanna have a panic attack on this beach. But if I did have a panic attack on this beach, I know that it would not be the ruin of me. It would be really uncomfortable and scary, and I would like it to be over quickly, of course. But I know that it will be over, and then I'll go about my business as best I can. So it's really important for me to say that. Now, does that mean that I never take care of myself? I, don't, I just run myself into the ground? I have no healthy habits? Of course it doesn't mean that. I would like to think that I make my best effort to take care of myself the way anybody should probably take care of themselves regardless of their anxiety or mental health situation. I'm, I have terrible sleeping habits, I will freely admit that. I'm working on that, I really am, I promise. I'm not making good headway, but I'm trying. But I try to eat well, I exercise all the time, I meditate every day, I try to stay engaged with hobbies, I try to maintain healthy relationships in my life. I do all of those things because they're just good for human beings to do. Does that help me? stay recovered it probably does because it means that i'm able to keep my stress level relatively low even during stressful times and it's going to spike it'll just come back down again and i do i think i do a really reasonable job of managing my stress levels so i never get to the point where i'm so overwhelmed that my psychological flexibility and resiliency drops way down because i will tell you what it would mean to stop being recovered or to have a relapse it would mean that i would experience some sort of psychological challenge in the form of a scary physical sensation that I interpret somehow as dangerous or a scary thought or just general sense of fear or doom or some scary thought that I used to have about death or existential problems or not existing anymore or getting some disease or something like that. I would experience what I used to experience and then I would choose to deal with that in the old way. Now, is everybody vulnerable to that? Yeah, we are all vulnerable to that, especially in times when we're under the gun. And like I said, our flexibility and resiliency might drop down a bit. We are vulnerable to that. We are, we are vulnerable to making choices to do things the old way, the way that got us in the hole, the way that ruined everything, the way that helped the disorder develop and get maintained. So are my healthy habits now sort of keeping me out of that trap? Yeah, they probably are to a certain extent but I don't do them for the purpose of keeping the anxiety at bay or making sure I don't have a relapse. I don't plan any of my life around making sure that I don't go backwards or keeping it from coming back. I never ever think about that. 
in fact, this is the most I've thought about that in years and years and years, only because I get asked all the time for my tips on maintaining my recovery. And I'm like, okay, it's about time that I record that podcast episode. So here I am. But otherwise, I never think about these things. I never say I really should sleep more or else I might be anxious. I say I should sleep more because I don't like being tired. <laughs> and, and I am tired a lot. So more and more that's become a thing. And it's like, okay, so this is going to prompt me to try and change my sleep habits. But it has nothing to do with feeling anxious or afraid or like, oh, I'm not getting enough sleep, so my anxiety is through the roof. I never think that. I never think that I should make good food choices for my mental health. I mean, my physical health certainly helps to buoy my mental health. There's no doubt about that. But I don't make those choices specifically to try to manage my mental health or keep a relapse from happening or going back to square one. So how do I sum this up? It's a relatively short episode that I just wanted to, I wanted to bring you to this place to record because it's a place that I was once unable to come to to record, uh, especially by myself. But I really wanted to kind of go through that. What do I do to stay recovered? What do I do to make sure that I don't relapse? What do I do to make sure that I don't go back to square one? What do I do to make sure that it doesn't come back? I do nothing because the it that you are so worried will come back one day doesn't exist. There is no it for me anymore. There might be anxious feelings, there might be fear, there might be discomfort, there might be physical sensations of stress or anxiety or distress, but there is no it. So it's very important for me to say that. What do I do to keep it from coming back? I do nothing to keep it from coming back because there hasn't been an it in my life for a very long time. So that's it. It's a relatively short episode this week. I don't have a whole lot more to say about that. I Just let me recap quickly so I'm not misunderstood. I am a big fan of healthy habits. I think everybody should take care of themselves. Everybody should take care of their body. Everybody should take care of their mind. Everybody should take care of their emotional health, their spiritual health. You should do all of those things. Everybody should do that. But I am not a fan of those things specifically because of what that it's good for anxiety or because it's a recovery trick or because they're anxiety shields. I don't think that at all. I just think that those are things that everybody should do because it does help us live you know, a more productive life, a more fulfilling life, a less encumbered life. Like it gives us choices, it gives us freedom. Take care of yourself because it's a smart move to take care of yourself. You get one life, you get one body, like take care of it. So I am a fan of those things, but I am not a fan of those things just to maintain recovery or to achieve recovery or to stop anxiety from happening, none of those things. So yeah, I have a lot of healthy habits. I will continue to have a lot of healthy habits, but I, I do them just because they're smart choices. They have nothing to do with anxiety, and they haven't in a very, very long time. I used to have a lot of habits that I would tie to anxiety, but I learned a very long time ago that they had nothing to do with my panic attacks, so they had nothing to do with my recovery at all. And toward that end, I will leave you with something a little bit cheeky. Listen, I know a lot of people in this community who are kind of proud of the fact that they got recovered and have stayed recovered on a steady diet of chocolate, you know, cola, and cigarettes. And that's true. Those people do exist and they are living those lives fueled by chocolate, cigarettes, and cola, you know, hamburgers, McDonald's. Like I know a lot of people that almost view it as a badge of honor that they have terrible diets. They don't exercise. They don't meditate and they recovered and they are still recovered today. So there you go. The proof is in the pudding in a way. And I always enjoy when those people speak up. I'm not sure why sometimes they get so passionate about that. That's fine. You live your life any way you want, but that's, that's the deal in terms of like recovery habits and staying recovered. And especially for me, there's nothing to maintain. The recovery isn't recovery anymore. Recovery was a process. Recovery isn't really a state that I live in. I just live. I don't have to live recovered. I just live. So thanks for listening to me. Thanks for coming along to the shores of Long Island Sound with me. I hope that the sound is okay. I'll probably have to rig it a little bit when I get back to the studio and play with it so you can hear me. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a, a uh, next week or going to talk about, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week as usual, but I will be back for another podcast. I don't know where I'll be. Maybe I'll just be back in the office to do it. I can't really tell. Just a quick reminder, uh, if you're watching this, especially if you're new to the podcast, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment. Twice a week at least, I circle back to YouTube and answer my comments. If you're listening to this as a podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or some platform that lets you rate or review the podcast, leave me a five-star rating maybe write a quick review if you really dig it because it helps other people find the podcast and then other people get the help that I am trying to provide to as many people as I can. And that's it. Thanks a bunch.
This is this episode of The Anxious Truth because I don't even know what episode number this is. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and I will see you next week. Remember, keep moving forward because every step forward you take counts no matter how small it is. See you later. Somebody told me that you do or die But I believe all you can do is try And as the city stands ten stories high I'm gonna live my life